coat of goodness like simple clothes, natural fibers, light colors, uh, very comfortable, easily adjusts to changes in the waistline, <laughs> like that. Uh, uh, a person in the transcendental mood of consciousness uh, will wear some dress, will wear tilak, huh? or some dress that identifies them as a member of an esoteric school. So uh, that way, by, by the way they dress, you can see, oh, well, here's, your, here's your art, Krishna Prabhupada, dedicated to the glorification of God. Now, what about psychological things? For example, the meaning of life. Huh? What was that? Monty Python did a, a whole thing on that, the meaning of life. I don't think he ever came up with an answer. I think his answer is here. Life is meaningless. Huh? People in the mode of ignorance, they don't know the meaning of life. They have no idea. Huh? So they say, ah, life is meaningless. It has no meaning. But you ask someone in the, the mode of passion, and they'll tell you life is to enjoy with all the gusto you can, huh? like that. But we know that the real enjoyment in life is attaining self-realization. And someone who has attained self-realization knows that life is for the service of Krishna. In that way, a person becomes transcendental to these three modes. So we work for Krishna's transcendental pleasure. A person in the mode of goodness wants purity, piety, happiness, knowledge, things like that. But someone in the mode of ignorance, their work is all about intoxication, self-destruction, madness. Huh? Someone who, uh, in the mode of ignorance, that gets some money, what's the first thing they do? They go out and spend it on drugs. So that's uh, the reason that they can't attain anything in life except self-destruction. And we already went over the people in the mode of ignorance worship ghosts and spirits. People in the mode of passion worship powerful and demoniac men. People in the mode of goodness worship the Supreme, but people in transcendental consciousness worship Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uddhava has a question. When the Yadavas were fighting between each other, uh -huh. is that transcendental ignorance? Passion. Passion? Yeah. Well, Krishna wanted that. Uh -huh. Krishna made that happen. Krishna, it's said that Krishna made the Yadu dynasty fight among themselves because he saw that in the future, they were so powerful that if he didn't take them off the earth, they would have dominated the whole planet. They would have dominated all the other uh, nations and people. And he didn't want that. It, Kali Yuga was coming. See? Kali Yuga means chaos. So if there's one group or one uh, party or one nation that dominates the whole world, you don't have chaos, you have order. Krishna didn't want that because he was preparing the conditions for the Kali Yuga. So he had to remove his family from the earth. Otherwise, they would have ruined everything. So that's transcendental passion. Yeah. And transcendental yeah. ignorance would be Shiva destroying the universe. Yeah. Well, the New World Order, it can't succeed. It may succeed for a little while, you know, just like um, Hitler's plans. Hitler actually had, he was, uh, preparing to introduce Vedic culture. I met a couple in Louisiana. He was South Indian and, he wa and she was German. And I asked them, how did you meet? And they told me this fascinating story that they met in Germany during World War II because Hitler had taken this whole village from South India and literally transplanted it stone by stone into Germany. And they had a Brahminical school and they were training the Germans, to, the, the Aryans, right, to take up Vedic culture 
and that after Hitler conquered the whole world, they were going to introduce this everywhere. So, uh, oh, Hitler did have a clue. <laughs> because he didn't understand that the way that Vedic culture is introduced is not by force. If you, if you try to introduce it by force, you ruin everything. The only way to introduce Vedic culture is to convince people. Vedic culture is Brahminical culture. It's not Kshatriya culture. It's not Vaishya culture. You can't trick people or force people into accepting Vedic culture. You can only convince them. You can only educate them into Vedic culture. Huh? Because Vedic culture is based on the mode of goodness. So if you use the mode of passion and ignorance to try to establish Vedic culture, it completely ruins the whole thing in the very start. Huh? Well, Hitler didn't understand Vedic culture, but actually he knew quite a bit about it and his plans were to introduce it. It's just he was trying to introduce it in the worst possible way. Oh, where did he get the knowledge from, from Blavatsky and the Theosophists? Yeah, yeah. Of course, they were completely misinterpreting Vedic culture as being impersonalism and all about these different races and everything. I mean, if you read it, it's just a whole mishmash of, of stuff. It doesn't make any sense, really. But that was their own interpretation. So uh, instead of giving Krishna's interpretation, they had their own, yeah, really, it's, it was a total waste of time because it in, introduces so much confusion. Uh, Vedic culture is extremely monolithic. It's very heterogeneous. It includes everything, but it's ultimately consistent, self-referential, and perfect. Mm -hmm. So people have to be raised to the level of intelligence where they can understand it. You, you can't introduce it by force. You can't make people vegetarians or make them give up intoxication by force. It's not possible. Uh, they'll rebel. And, you know, he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. That's karma. So if you use force to introduce Vedic culture, you'll corrupt the culture in the process. Not good. So if we're going to introduce Vedic culture, it has to be by conviction. We have to convince people. We have to influence people. Yes, Krishna wanted to eliminate the Jews because in his rationalization they were somehow against the Aryans. But don't ask me to explain it. I don't understand it myself. It's a big mess. I don't even want to, you know, try to wrap my mind around it uh, because I know it's perverted. We have the pure, perfect understanding of Vedic culture from Srila Prabhupada. And we have to use that understanding to implement it properly. Yeah, it's like Krishna Prabhupada says, it's a hodgepodge. <laughs> They're getting one thing from here, one thing from there. You know, the master race, where did that come from? Nietzsche. I mean, what does Nietzsche have to do with Vedas? Yeah, it's just mental speculation. So as long as we think this process of mental speculation will lead anywhere, we're always going to have hodgepodge nonsense con conclusions because actually that's not the Vedic process. The Vedic process is evam parampara prapto, idang rajrishayo vidu, that uh, the Vedic knowledge is passed down through parampara, and the, the Vedic kings accepted it in that way. Uh, the rajarshis, uh, they were rajas, they were kings, and they were also rishis, or wise men. So today, it's very hard for a rishi to become a king. <laughs> you have to, ba you have to have, <laughs> yeah, right. You have to have uh, a rascal to become a king nowadays. But uh, yeah, I mean, the hodgepodge, the singularity is hodgepodge to the nth power. Okay, hodgepodge to the hodgepodge power. <laughs> it's complete speculation and it'll reach a climax total confusion that'll be the result yeah Krishna Prabhupada explain the, your, 
the British slang to Florian, please. Hodge, isn't he the speaker of the house or something? <laughs> That's not surprising. <laughs> So the goal of worship, for people in the mode of ignorance, they want oneness with God, which is impossible. Huh? You have to be ignorant to want to merge with God because it means the end of your individuality, it means the end of your existence, just merging with God and then that, that everything is finished. So uh, people who want mystic powers, the Mayavadis, people like that, they're basically in the mode of ignorance. People in the mode of passion go to church because why? They want social prestige, they want money, they 